Hello, Jack and Jills. I'm Epic Bach, and welcome back to another episode of KOTOR. In this episode, we are going to go ahead and talk to our companions on the Ebon Hawk. So, for those of you who are hoping we move on to Corbon already, I'm sorry. Next episode is the one that you'll be looking f the most forward to. I'm so ready for that, but for now, let's see what Mission has to say. Hey there. What can I do for you? Well, let's see. We did learn several long episodes ago that your brother is now loose on the galaxy, so I want to talk to you about him. I want to thank you for helping me with Griff. You, you did everything you could for my brother, more than most people would have. I know it might look like it didn't make any difference in the end. Griff's in debt and on the run like usual, but at least I know we tried to help him. Well, you know what? Here's hoping that he'll eventually change mission. I know people can change no matter how bad they were, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. None of us is perfect, but I've come to realize that Griff is a little less perfect than most. <laughs> my brother oh, is what little. he is, but I've learned to deal with that. I'll never forget that he looked after me when I was just a kid, but I don't feel like I owe him anything anymore. Okay, so... I don't know. That's actually a very mature attitude to have, Mission. I've made my peace with Griff and what he means to me. If he ever shows up again, I'll deal with him. But I'm not going to dwell on my brother anymore. It's Good time for to you. move forward. So, is there anything else you need? Nope, I think that pretty much wraps it up for Mission. Okay, have it your way. Woohoo! Excellent. So Mission's doing pretty good. Let's go visit Candorus next. It's been a while since we've talked to him. Yeah, what do you want? Well, I don't kind of really, really, really. I was wondering if you had any more war stories. I don't have as many strange stories like the last one I told you. Dang it. But I do have a couple about me and the stuff I've done. In one battle above the world of Althea, my unit managed to defeat a force of Althea ten times our own size. That battle gained me command of an entire subsect of my clan. Well... Tell me the story, I'm curious. For five days, they had managed to hold off our forces, keeping us to the outer rings of their world, preventing us from attacking it directly. My task was to assault one of their flanks with a false attack. The Altheory would be drawn out by the units I had sent in. Once they had surrounded those units, the bulk of my forces would attack from the rear and defeat them in detail. Ah, so... did it... I'm assuming it work... worked. Things didn't go as I had planned. I saw an opening, a mistake they had made in the disposition of their forces, and took it. While fending off our main force, they had let their fleet split in two. The center of their entire fleet was left exposed. I turned my forces and assaulted the center of their fleet, decimating them. So, what did they do? Their slow, ponderous ship could not turn to face us without being overwhelmed. The command vessels were destroyed in seconds. Their ranks were thrown into chaos. It was amusing to watch the surviving ships scatter and flee. Several even tried to dive through the plane of the rings to escape us. They were shredded by the rings or crashed into rocks or were destroyed by our forces as we pursued them. Warriors do not flee from a battle if they are losing. They fight to the end, as we did against your Jedi Revan. Another time, maybe, I'll tell you about how the war with the Republic went. For now, let's just get on with things. Is there something else you want to know? No, that was a uh, pretty interesting enough all on its own. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. <laughs> I still love that response. HK-47, what's up, man? Statement. HK-47 I mean, is ready to serve, Master. Good. Well, you know, I'm not sure if I've upped my repair recently, but let's go ahead and try to repair him. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Let's do Request. this. I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. <laughs> Let's get started instead of addressing the obvious insult. Statement. As you wish, Master. The first stage is the simple one, and that is accessing my central control cluster. This may take a while. First, you will need to open three panels. Alright, so open three panels. And now rewind Yay! the last uh, success. three I love relays. It. 
Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Accessing new memory. Access complete. I have recovered information on my owner previous to the commercial officer, Master. Intriguing. What's so intriguing about it? Statement. It appears that my previous owner was a human senator on the planet Coruscant. A man of importance who obviously appreciated quality craftsmanship. And how did he get a hold of you? Answer. I am unsure, Master. Any knowledge of my owner prior to him is still deleted. The Senator did assume I was a protocol droid, however. I do remember that I was very pleased to be the property of a Senator. One of his assistants discovered my assassination functions later through questioning. The assistant was quite alarmed and told the Senator I should be scrapped quickly to avoid a scandal. Naturally, the Senator had me eliminate the fool. <laughs> So, we're not really talking about nice Senator, I see. <laughs> Observation. Senators are not nice, Master. They are either on top of the game or yesterday's news. My Master told me that frequently, you see. I was most kind proud of to have partaken in the political system of the galaxy. During the time my owner possessed me, he gained significant rank. Given time, I believe he could have become Chancellor. I even eliminated a few key opponents that he did not ask for. Freebies, if you will. Freebies? I mean, does that mean that you charge them for kill? So you can just do that. Answer. Certainly. Why not? I am an intelligent <laughs> droid, you know. I see an opportunity, and I take it. And my master was most pleased with my work. Observation. I think he would have done far better had he not allowed his use of me to become personal. Oh, he no. He set me on his wife. And why would he do something like that? Answer. I am unsure. The human was most agitated and angry. I believe his wife had done something that had displeased him greatly. I was to go to their summer estate and terminate his wife, along with whatever male companion I discovered there. Haha, uh -huh. so he was she was cheating on him. Statement. I have no idea, Master. Cheating seems to be a relevant term only when one is caught in the act. Otherwise, it is viewed as intelligence. <laughs> no? I journeyed to the southern continent, but it appeared my Master was not far behind me. Apparently, he regretted his activation of the protocol. When I found the wife and her companion, I proceeded to launch my attack. But my Master interposed his own body and was destroyed. It was rather a strange meatbag thing to do, do you not agree? Naturally, I shut myself down, my master being terminated. That is a very intellectual way to look at that whole situation, and I kind of love it. So that's two out of two masters you have killed. Awesome. Observation. Only so far, master. <laughs> there are still more memories not recovered, remember? Yeah, yeah. So what happens then? Statement. I believe the senator's wife was unsure what I was or what to do with me. It was she who sold me to the corporate officer, an acquaintance. Gotcha. Um, any other memories? Answer. As previously, I have found a few more programs which will enhance my performance. A most gratifying discovery, in fact. There is still nothing from previous memories uncovered. You will have to operate again if you desire to find them. With luck, I will discover the stimulus to unlock my core, and all this will be unnecessary. I do thank you for the attempt, however, Master. All right, because of our repairs, HK47 now has a permanent bonus of his plus of plus 2 to his defense rating in addition to the plus 2 dexterity from your earlier repairs. So we've repaired him twice so far. Okay, I honestly don't know how many more times we need to repair him in order to get to the main quote-unquote functions, but it can't really be too much more. All right, I am so sorry, Jolie. <laughs> the last time I talked to all the members of the Ebon Hawk, I decided for some reason that he wasn't uh, uh, important, even though he's brand new. So let's remedy that and talk to him now. Got something on your mind? Well, why on... Well, my goodness. So many good options. Let's focus on this Manon first and ask him about Sunri's verdict. What does he think about that? Innocent. I don't know what to make of it, to tell the truth. Do you think justice has been done? 
No, not really. I mean, he probably really... No, I already said that he did it, so no, not really. But that has little to do with the law, doesn't it? A sad state of affairs, that. Too bad, really. Sunry was a good man once. Ah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. My jaw aches. <laughs> well, that was short. Let's We've try, let's try that again. <laughs> so why'd you decide to come with me? You got yourself a fast little ship? <laughs> I forgot what engine sounded like. The closest thing to that on Kashik is an uller in mating season. Ugh, frightful. Ooh, so you just wanted a ride? <laughs> or it could be for the free food. What's the gunk that comes out of a synthesizer on this bucket anyway? Do you never clean the darn thing? Well... Um... No, I... That wasn't really an answer to my question. But I, I understand the response. It's very sassy. I'm old, dammit. I'm allowed to be enigmatic when I want to be. And don't you go telling me otherwise. You know... You remind me of someone else I knew ages ago. Pleasant enough fellow, great destiny, all of that. Breath like a bantha. Hey, are you saying my breath smells bad? No, but it could be. An Anduvian salt tablet would clear that right up, you know. Anyway, uh, where was I? <laughs> oh yes, Andor Vex was his name. The force swirled around him like a hurricane. That's how great his destiny was. Well, I've never really heard of him, but I know nothing at all. No, you wouldn't have. Sometimes swirling force is just swirling force. It gets us old Jedi's excited at our age, so we go, ooh, ooh destiny. destiny. Well, like it turned it. out that poor Andor believed a wee bit too much in the infallibility of that destiny. That overconfidence turned out to be his downfall. So, okay, I have swirling <coughs> swirling destiny going around me. I guess he's uh, trying to have a hidden meaning, being agnamic? Oh my goodness, I butchered words. I don't know. Are you overconfident? I hadn't noticed. Even if I had, I would never comment on it. We're talking about Andor, remember? Let's see. Oh yes, Andor's downfall. I was pretty young myself when it happened. At the time, I thought that Andor's destiny couldn't be more boring. So... why didn't you leave then? Well, he had a much better food dispenser than you do. Ouch! That and the fact that I'm even offended. I wasn't an altogether impatient twit. I was just about to abandon Andor to whatever the Force intended for him when his ship was overtaken by a Dimian warship. Now, you've probably never heard of the Dimians, nope. but at the time, they were a nasty lot led by a nastier overlord named Krat. Tall fellow, big teeth. Bad Krat has us hauled onto the bridge of his ship for questioning, and that's when I knew that Andor's destiny was at hand. So, did he kill Krat? Of course he did. Haven't you been listening? It was not in the way you'd probably expect, though. Well, Andor decides that his destiny makes him invulnerable and starts making all sorts of demands free me now i'm not answering questions <laughs> blah 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 don't you know who i am blah 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 Krat decides he's had enough and begins crushing andor's neck i told the boy he should have kept his mouth shut i think he agreed too or this could have just been gurgling noises no well, anyway <laughs> finally Krat has enough of andor and tosses him aside into this giant energy intake shaft Andor gets sucked in and starts bouncing around, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Maybe Andor hit something sensitive on the way down, or just didn't agree with the reactor core. Next thing I know, all the ship's alarms are ringing. You've got to be- oh my goodness, this is a great story. Keep going. Everyone panics, and I run, barely making it to the ship in time before the explosion. Krat dies horribly, and the Dimians never quite recovered. Changed the political course of the entire sector for centuries to come. I'd call that quite a destiny, wouldn't you? <laughs> I love how one of the options is, I hate you, old man. Are you kidding me? This is the best stories. He has lots of fun. Um, well, let's see. But how can you even be sure he was responsible? What? Are you kidding? What are the odds of that happening anyway? A billion to one? You should do so well as to be sucked into the engine of some evil Sith Lord, you know. Andor was a hero. 
Sort of. Anyway, go on. My throat is dry and you're making me cranky. Shoo! <laughs> yes, that could be our great big fate for the end of the game, is to be sucked into part of the engine and destroy Malik that way. Wouldn't that be awesome? Not really. It'd be quite a lame story. <laughs> yes. What is it? Let's see. I'm sure there's something wrong. Go ahead and just tell me, Jahani. I was remembering Taris. Okay. I'm sorry, Jahani. No, it's all right. Oh, good. I think I'm over the worst of it. I apologize again for lashing out at you. It was not your fault. It was I'm glad you came to your senses. a horrible place to have to live. At least in the lower cities where the non-humans tended to get relegated. Living for years in a place with no sun, living off the trash dropped from the upper levels, and the meager pay doing back-breaking labor. And, well, I mean, you can't. And the rack wolves, those rack wolves. There was always the danger of rack wolves coming up from the sewers, or more mundane predators living and working in the area. My family and I struggled each and every day to make something of our lives. But we could only go so far. Taxes from the corrupt government, more fees from the gangs controlling the streets, and whatever was left paying for what food and medical supplies we could afford. Well, was it really that bad? We had no money to spare for any amenities. Even the enclave on Dantooine seems a paradise in comparison. And of course, there was the constant bigotry and hate from the more affluent and human citizens, lording their wealth over us living below. Every once in a while, a rich human would come down through the lower levels with his droid entourage just to see how the wildlife lived and laughed at the mockeries that were our successes. But That's cool. I have come to meet many decent humans in my travels since those days. Indeed, some of the greatest people I have ever met are human. Oh, That's good to know, like who? The Jedi who encouraged me to join the Order. The one who was with the group going to fight the Mandalorians. She was human. I... I, I suppose I see something of her in you when I look... I am sorry. I am getting away from my point, if there even was one. Sometimes, I curse the day my parents fled to Taris. But then again, if they had not, I would not be where I am today. Quite funny when you think about it. Little choices in our life drastically determine how our life is going to be. So, uh, where are your parents? Another story for another time. For now, we must continue our own epic. To save the galaxy, if we can. All right. Well, it's kind of interesting knowing Jahani's background a little bit more. But for now, let's go ahead and check in on Bastila. How can I help? Let's see. Last time we talked about, I think, her mom and her dad. Let's see what else she has to talk to us about. I do. I've been watching you, studying you closely to see what kind of progress you've made since your training at the hands of Master Zah. And <laughs> what? You've been grading me? <laughs> I've seen how you've resisted many temptations and continue to walk the path of the light side. Very commendable, but I'm afraid you might stray from this path. You need to see what the dark side represents in its entirety, for it is what we battle. Only the wisdom of a Jedi Master can truly explain this, but I will do my best to make you understand. And so, what are you trying to tell me? The dark side is not simply giving in to anger, temptation, or to use the force to destructive ends. These things only lead to the dark side. The dark side grows stronger and more insidious the closer you draw to it. It begs you to surrender to it, to release all its terrible power, and it becomes harder and harder to resist. And once you stop resisting, it's too late. It twists you up inside and turns you into a mockery of everything you once stood for. Well, I mean, honestly, you kind of are, seem to be talking from personal experience here. I am no less resistant to temptation than any other. I simply have the benefit of training that you do not. But even the training of the Jedi might not be enough to save us. We need only to look at the atrocities which have been committed by those under its sway to understand the terrible, corrupting evil of the dark side. Millions dead, and far more suffering. What sort of person would you have to become to perform such deeds gladly? Hmm. Well... 
<laughs> I couldn't really see myself doing such things. More like I couldn't see myself choosing dark side options. That is why the dark side is so insidious. If you were not careful, you do not even see each small step you take towards it until it's too late. It's so easy to think that we would never fall prey to such a horror, that we have unlimited control, vigilance, and foresight. If only that were true. The Sith have become powerful because there are many Jedi who've succumbed to the lure of the dark side and joined their cause. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause, to use their own knowledge against them? We are weakened while they are strengthened, so we must harden our hearts and do whatever is required to fight against the dark side. I think I get the even when the Basala. battle becomes wearying. Okay. Yeah, sorry, like, I'm starting to get bored from her talking about fighting and temptation and blah 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 blah. Uh, so must we keep discussing this? No, I suppose not. I've spoken more than enough of the dark side. It is up to you whether you heed my words or not. But words alone cannot save one from the dark side. Come, we should continue with the task at hand. When the time comes, I only hope we are all strong enough to do what we must. All right. And saving my favorite for last. Let's see what Karth has to say this time around. What do you need? Do you want to talk? Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive, th there's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. Okay. I'm luckily for you in the next episode. That is what we're going to be doing. We'll start, hopefully start Dustal's or Karth's side quest and checking out what there is on Corbon. So thank you, Jack and Jills, for joining me today, and I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic, awesome, amazing, fabulous rest of your day. <laughs> Bye!